God bless you. Would you lead us in prayer? Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Donna. All right. Uh, we have been speaking about, talking about Joseph. And uh, last week, we left off on chapter 40. Chapter 40. Um, and the story is getting better and better. But let's see what happens here. Uh, we had read the first five verses of chapter 40 in Genesis where it talks about that, uh, you know, Joseph was in prison because Potiphar's uh, wife accused him of rape, and he was put in, in, in prison. And while he was there, the, uh, the chief of the butlers and the chief of the bakers both ended up there. Now, we, it doesn't say what they did, perhaps, and I'm just going to give a few ideas. Who could have known? Perhaps they had a plot to kill him. Who knows? You never know. Or perhaps the, the king one day just, you know, got into a little tizzy, and he didn't like the way the food came out <laughs> or, or the drink. So you, we, we don't know. But for some reason, both of them ended up in the prison. And then... Um, it says here, the captain of the guard, which is Potiphar, um, you know, he placed him in, in the prison ward where Joseph was. And he, it says, verse 4, he charged the captain of the guard, which is Potiphar, charged Joseph with them. In other words, he commended both of these, uh, the chief of the butler and the chief of the baker, to Joseph for him to, uh, he, ha he was responsible for them. And he says, and he served them. And I uh, spoke about this uh, last week. You know, he could have said, oh, you know, some people get haughty when, when they are given responsibility. They get like, you know, they, they, they think, you know, and it goes to their heads, let's just say. But not Joseph. He was a humble man. As a matter of fact, the Bible, like I said, it says here he served them. And they continued a season in ward. And I just want to, once again, reemphasize, like I did last week, Joseph was a servant. Wherever we see him uh, in the Bible, we see he was serving people. And by the way, this is another interesting fact. In the book, in the Old Testament, as far as especially Genesis here, we're talking about uh, Joseph is spoken more about than any other man more than Moses, more than Jacob, his father, more than Isaac, more than these other great Noah, more than Noah. Think about it. He was such a humble man, you hardly, you hardly say, well, you know, wow. You know, from chapter, so I believe we began with 37. 37 through, I believe it's 50, 51, 52, around there. All those chapters, you have the story, except for one. 38, I believe, all speak about Joseph and his life. So that makes you think, you know, God really wanted to make an example of him. Um, let's go to verse 5. We, we read this, but I'll, I'll, I'll read it again. Genesis chapter 40, verse 5. And they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of, of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. Okay, so both of these had a dream. Both of these men had a dream. And um, verse 6, And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. So he saw that they were both sad. So apparently, you know, I guess, you know, when they had dreams, they don't know what it's about, you know. They wonder. <laughs> they know that it's probably something important, but they don't know what it's about. Verse uh, 7, and he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward, in the prison, in other words. 
of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? You know, this shows us a window into uh, Joseph's heart. Here, here Joseph is, you know, um, anybody else, you know, uh, um, even us, if we were in the, his situation where his brothers put him in a pit, then they sold him to the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites sold him to Potiphar. Then he, w he had served about 11 years with Potiphar, in Potiphar as a slave, a servant, slash servant. And, and then he was put in prison. It ends up being for at least two years. You know, in, in his situation, up, up at this point, it, w it was not that long. But in his situation, you would think he would be the one that would be pitying himself. Joseph, he would, you know, probably be, wouldn't even care, you know, if they look sad. But Joseph was a compassionate man. He was a humble man. He was always looking to serve. And he looked at them and he says, why are you looking so sad? Verse 8, and they said unto him, we have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me then, I pray you. So they told him, we've both had a dream, and nobody can interpret it for us. You know, they were sad about that. They wanted to know the interpretation of dream, of that dream. Um, just a little side note here. You know, they didn't have the word like we have. They had, you know, just the scrolls earlier, but they did not have the word like we have the word. Right now in this age and time, the way God speaks to us directly and most clearly is through his word. If you want to know what God wants, just read his word. He will speak to you. But God also sometimes gives dreams. But you know, it was, and, and in, in the Old Testament especially, God gave dreams more to the unsaved. Probably twice as much as he did to the people that knew him as their God. Why? It was, uh, I'll tell you, dreams are right now being used of God in the Muslim world. I don't know if y'all have heard, but there are so many stories of Muslim uh, men and women who ha are having dreams about Jesus Christ and some powerful dreams. I could, maybe if I have time at the very end, I can share one that was so powerful that I read about. But there are so many powerful, powerful dreams that they're having that to the point that many are receiving Jesus Christ as their Savior. Imagine that. Now, that is not to say that all of us, you know, like every dream is, 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 is of God, because no. As a matter of fact, uh, let me. Let's just say this, in, uh, in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, it talks about, you know, some people that are always putting a lot of, um, how do you say, um, um, weight, a lot of weight uh, on their dreams saying, this, this is of God, this is what God said. They don't realize, you know, no, many times God just, we, not every dream is of God. We shouldn't put so much stock. The word of God should be, you know, and God does use dreams from time to time. I'm not saying he doesn't, but re, uh, let's read these verses. This is a part, you don't have to go to it, but it's Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business with much activity, and a fool's voice is known by the multitude of words. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. This is the verse. Better, oh, let's see, wait, wait, wait. Verse 7, I'm sorry. For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there are also divers vanities. But fear thou God. In other words, don't put too much stock in dreams. Yet these men knew that these dreams were uh, something special. That's why they were troubled. And it says here, and this, w the verse I just read, I love it. The first thing that um, uh, Joseph uh, told the chief of the butler and the chief of the baker is this, do not interpretations belong to God. He was giving God 
the glory right away. He wasn't going to, you know, from young age, he, he had special dreams. And he wasn't going to uh, bring the glory to himself. He began by saying, the interpretations are of God. And then he said, tell me them, I pray you. In other words, tell me what the dream was. Verse 9, and the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, in my dream, behold, a vine was before me. So the butler started out, and he talked about a vine being right in front of him. Verse 10, and in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it budded and let her blossoms shot, and her blossoms, I'm sorry, shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. Now, when we look at this, <laughs> I mean, I for one, what kind of crazy dream is that? You know, I couldn't make any heads or tails of that. I mean, that's a crazy dream. But listen to this. Um, it con he continues with the dream. Verse 11, and Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, and I pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Okay, you know what? This seems like a puzzle. Total enigma. You know, I mean, a brain te teaser, uh, teaser, if you will. Verse 12, and Joseph said unto him, this is the interpretation of it. Right away, he knew. The three branches are three days. My question is, who would have thought? <laughs> three branches, that means three days, but yes, that's what he's saying. Verse 13, yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place, and thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former matter, manner when thou wast his butler. Okay, first of all, I want to say uh, the butler was in charge of giving him his wine, his drink. And here, Joseph is telling him, in three days, the three vines, in three days, he's going to restore you, your position back as a butler. And you're going to be serving him like you did before. Verse 14, but think on me. Joseph is saying this to the butler. Think, in other words, remember me. Think on me when it shall be well with thee and show kindness. I pray thee. I, in other words, I, I beseech thee, I beg thee unto me and make mention of me unto Pharaoh and bring me out of this house. Okay, so being the case that the dream meant, and Joseph had faith, that he was going to be restored to his former position as butler, he said, please remember me when you're back with the Pharaoh, you know, to get me out of here. Now, not that Joseph, Joseph was a man of God. He was faithful. He trusted God. But you know, he was not a fatalist. Many times we tend to be fatalists. God will do this. Well, God gives us wisdom to do certain things. And God was giving him the wisdom to tell this man, please remember me when you, get, when you go there, you know, somehow that I also may get, be able to get out of here. Verse 15, for indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews. And here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. This was not really a complaint. He was basically telling him the truth. He, he was saying, I'm a Hebrew. I was taken from my land. I've done nothing, nothing to deserve, nothing to be here. They put me in this dungeon or the type of prison. But, you know, he was relating what was happening to him. And verse 16 uh, for those that came in, uh, Genesis chapter 40, verse 16. When the chief baker saw the interpretation was good, he said unto Joseph, I also was in my dream, and behold, I had three white baskets on my head. Now the baker, the chief of the baker, is, uh, he's of the bakers is going to tell him his dream. He said he had three white baskets on his head. Verse 17, chapter 40, verse 17. And in the uppermost basket, there was all manners of baked meats for Pharaoh. A lot of meats on top of his head in the basket. 
and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head. So as the uh, baker is carrying these uh, on his head, the birds came and ate, okay? In verse 18, and Joseph answered and said, this is the interpretation thereof. So he's going to tell him what the dream means. The three baskets are three days. Who would have thought once again, just like the three vines were three days, the three baskets are three days. Yet, verse 19, within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee and shall hang thee on a tree, and the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee. Whereas the first interpretation was good, this next one is really bad. Put it this way. He's ba- well, let me tell you, let me say, he's basically telling him he's going to cut your head off, and the birds, after your head is cut off, the birds are going to come and eat the flesh, your flesh. Verse 20. Well, okay, let me just say this. Okay, let me stop here and say, um, the fact that Joseph is bold enough to say the truth, to speak the truth, he could have not, you know, he could have said, well, I'm going to give him bad news, you know. Some, you know, nowadays we see pastors who are shepherding, quote, shepherding their flocks, but they don't speak truth. You listen on TV. If you spend enough time in the word, you know that what they are speaking is not truth. So many false prophets uh, nowadays, especially today. The Bible says in the last days there should be many false prophets saying I am the Christ and preaching all kinds of foolishness. But you know, Joseph knew truth and he was willing to say the truth. Um, And also, uh, there was one other thing I was going to say about this. Let's see here. It'll come to me, but anyway, verse 20. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made, (coughs) excuse me, that he made a feast unto all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. Sure enough, after three days, it was Pharaoh's birthday. So he made a big party for all his servants, and he brought up the chief butler, <coughs> excuse me, and the chief baker both. Verse 21. And he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again, and he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Just as Joseph had interpreted, correctly interpreted the dream, the chief butler was restored to his former place as a butler. And it says he gave him the cup, you know, to serve the Pharaoh. Verse 22, but he hanged the chief baker just as Joseph had interpreted, as Joseph had interpreted to them. Verse 23, yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. You know, this shows how life is. So many times people help us on our way up, and we do not even pay attention. We don't recognize the people that are helping us. This man, you know, he was in prison, I mean, you would have thought that he might have said something, but you know, it was all according to God's plan, all according to God's plan. Joseph was forgotten by his brothers, betrayed. He was betrayed by uh, Potiphar's wife, and he was forgotten by the chief of the butler. Verse, I mean, uh, chapter 41, let's see how God has woven all this together, together. Chapter 41, verse 1. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. Okay, so now Pharaoh is having a dream. Can you guys kind of think what's going to happen? Verse 2. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kind. That's cattle. This is Pharaoh's dream. And fat-fleshed, they, were, they had eaten pretty well. And they fed in a meadow. So the, here were, I would say six, I'll say it just bluntly, six fat cows. They were well, you know, well-fed. Verse 
three. And behold, seven other kinds, seven other cattle, came up after them out of the river, ill-favored. They didn't look too good at all. And lean flesh, they were skinny, and stood by the other kind, they stood by the other cattle, upon the brink of the river. Verse 4, and the ill-favored, the ones that didn't look that good and that were skinny and lean-fleshed kind, did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kinds. So Pharaoh awoke. In his dream, Pharaoh uh, saw uh, these well-fed cows and these skinny cows, and then all of a sudden these seven skinny cows eat the seven fat cows. Verse 5, and he woke up, and he slept and dreamed the second time. He went back to sleep. And he had another dream. And behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good. Verse 6, and behold, seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprang up again. He saw seven ears of corn. They were good. They were healthy looking on the, on the stalk. And then seven thin ones. That You know, have you ever seen corn when it's... Not that great. <laughs> okay, it's kind of skinny and n not, not, not good. You can tell right away. Okay, and um, once again, Pharaoh woke up from his dream. Verse 8, and it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. Who do you think was troubling his spirit? The Lord was working there. He was troubled from his dream. And let me tell you this. We all have dreams. Mm, and... Um, I'm sure that the dreams that the, they had, the butler, the baker, and the Pharaoh were very special dreams to the point that it made them take notice, made them troubled, uh, perplexed, uh, uh, anxious. And it said here, verse 8, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt. Who do they go to? The magicians. And all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. So he told them all. He told the magicians. He told the uh, wise men. The dream, there was not one person that could interpret. Verse 9, then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. There he goes. This is God's sovereignty. At the right time, listen to this, God had the butler say, oh, guess what, Pharaoh? I forgot, you know, I do remember my faults. Why was it his fault? Because he had not done nothing about it. But he says, I do remember. And then verse 10, Pharaoh was wroth with his servants. He was angry, wroth, taken from the word wrath. And put me in ward in the captain uh, of the guard's house, both me and, and the chief. Uh, baker, he's telling him at that time that you were mad and you put both me and the chief baker in prison, okay? Verse 11, and we dreamed a dream in one night. This reminds me of Martin Luther King. I dreamed a dream. And he, excuse me, I and he, we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. So here now finally the butler is speaking up. He said, you know, we both had a dream, Verse 12, and there was there with us a young man. This is God unraveling his beautiful tapestry, his will, his perfect will. A Hebrew, who is this Hebrew? Joseph, servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man, according to his dream, he did interpret. So finally, he, he has come out with it. And can you imagine the Pharaoh, his ears are probably perked up, listening. Wow. Verse 13, and it came to pass as he interpreted to us, so it was. In other words, he's telling him everything came true. He restored me, he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Verse 14, then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. Whoa, here we're going to get to see how God works. And they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. That means quickly. They called for him and, and they brought him. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came unto Pharaoh. He took a shower, not, not a shower, you know, he cleaned himself. He put on clean clothes, nice clothes, because he was going to meet the Pharaoh. 
He's probably thinking, oh, I wonder why they're calling me. Verse 15, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, <clears throat> I have dreamed a dream. Exact words of Martin Luther King. I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. Here is Joseph, a mere, so you say Hebrew, former slave, prisoner, accused, accused, accused as a rapist. Not, not so, though. And he is now brought before the king, the number one ruler. And Pharaoh told him, you know, I have heard that you can interpret dreams. And he says, I've had a dream that I cannot interpret. He says, he, he wanted to know. And so verse 16, and Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, and I love this again. He not only said it to the uh, other two, the baker and the butler, chief of, bake, chief of bakers and chief of butlers. Now he's telling it to Pharaoh, it is not in me. In other words, it's not me. Humility. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. He's giving all glory to God. In other words, if I interpret it, it's not because of me. It's because of God, because he's the one that does the interpreting. And he's right about that. He used, David, uh, he used Joseph as a vessel. And it's important to note that whatever um, talents or gifts we have of the Holy Spirit, at <clears throat> Once we are Christians or just talents, we always should give glory to God. <clears throat> it is of God that we have the talents. It is of God that we have the gifts. He's the one that gives the strength, the very strength to do what he, em he empowers us to do what he puts in our hands to do. Verse 17, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, in my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river. Now here is Pharaoh's dream. Verse 18, and behold, there came up out of the river seven kine. We've already, we've already heard the dream. He's now repeating it today. He's now saying it to telling um, Joseph about it. He said he saw seven cattle, fat-fleshed, well, you know, they, they ate well, and well-favored. They looked nice. And they fed in a meadow, verse 19. And behold, seven other kine, that's cattle, came up after them, poor and very ill-favored. Once again, they did not look good. They were skinny. They, uh, have you ever seen a skinny cow, a real skinny cow? It, it, I mean, they don't look good at all. That's what they, the, he was seeing in his dream. And he says, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. So he's telling him, I've never seen uh, such bad-looking cows, okay? Skinny and really looking bad. Verse 20, and the lean and the ill-favored kind did eat, eat up the first seven fat kind. We already heard this. The ones that were skinny ate up the fat cows. Th they, look, they sound like weird dreams, right? And they kind of are. I mean, if we listen to them, verse 21, and when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ill-favored as at the beginning. So I awoke. And the Pharaoh is saying, you know, you would have thought that they would look better, you know, once they ate the cows. But they were still skinny. They still looked bad. Verse 22, and I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk. Full and good. Once again, he's uh, telling him the dream we've already heard. We saw, uh, he saw in his dream seven stalks of corn. They were healthy. They looked good. Verse 23, and behold, seven ears withered. You know, they were like, have you ever seen um, something dying? <laughs> and thin and, bl uh, excuse me, withered, thin, and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. Psh. Verse 24, and the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. Once again, it's the bad-looking, unhealthy, withered uh, ears of corn that ate up the good ears of corn. And I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it to me. You know, at that time, 
the, the Pharaoh kings, they, would, they trusted their magicians. And you know what? Magicians were uh, of the occult. They, I mean, they were not good people. And as if, you know, they turned to, to people who could not help him. He said, nobody could interpret this dream. Verse 25, and Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. In other words, both of them, you combine them, it's really one. God hath showed Pharaoh what is about, what he is about to do. He say, uh, Joseph is telling him, he's going to explain the dream. He's going to interpret it. He's saying it's all one thing, and God is actually showing you. It's a revelation, in other words. He's showing you what he is going to do. Wow, this is powerful. Verse 26, the seven good kine, or cattle, are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. In other words, <laughs> once again, you, you, who would have thought? But they represent seven years. Verse 27, and the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. So he's explaining here the famine, the famine that is about to hit them. Verse 28, this is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh, what God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. So Joseph is making sure that the Pharaoh knows that these dreams are of God. They're a revelation of what God will do in the future. Verse 29, behold, there come seven years of great plenty. The seven fat cows that were well fed, he, Joseph is saying that is interpreted as seven years of uh, good economy. In other words, plenty of food, grain, etc., throughout all the land of Egypt. Verse 30, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine. Seven years of, 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 of not having enough. When there's drought and famine, I mean, people die. And he's telling him, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. Now, you can imagine as Pharaoh is lis listening to this, he's wondering, wow, you know, what is about to hit here? Verse 31, and the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine, following for it shall be very grievous. In other words, they were very prosperous. Seven years of lots of food to eat, and everybody is, is doing well. But after those seven years, there comes a huge famine, seven years. The famine is so bad, the lack of food so great, that they even forget completely the good seven years that they just had with plenty of food. Verse 32, and for, the dream, and for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Wow, there's a lot in this verse. He is telling Pharaoh, the reason you had two dreams was a confirmation it was a confirmation, this thing is established by God. It is going to happen. It is for real. You know, God does that. He confirms. If we are um, confused about certain uh, steps we should take in our lives, decisions to make, paths to take, we need to pray and seek God. And, and, and through his word and in prayer, ask God. He will confirm his will to us. And it says, and the word of God says, and, and, and that Joseph said, and God will shortly bring it to pass. In other words, this is going to come soon. Now, that's another thing that probably startled the Pharaoh. Okay, verse 33. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. So now, Joseph, imagine this humble Joseph is now giving advice to Pharaoh. He's saying to him, you need to find a man who's discreet and wise. You know, he's not, he's not your, your average man. Somebody who's wise and who knows, uh, you know, 
how to deal, do, deal uh, with wisdom. Somebody who, who um, in a sense, say kind, but knows. No, he's not blabbing to everyone. He's a discreet man. Set him, what was that, Donna? He can handle it. He can handle it. There you go. There you go. Uh, there you go. Without any fanfare, he can handle it. And it says, and set him over the land of Egypt. Here's the advice. Verse 34, let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. God is giving Joseph this advice to give to the king, little knowing what's going to happen. But he's saying you need to find a man to, and, and let him appoint, choose officers over the land. In other words, he's going to delegate the, the, the job was way, it was huge. So he needed to have other people that he would appoint officers over the land. And he says, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. At that time, they would tithe. Uh, they didn't have their money. They would tithe of their grain, of their food. And here, Joseph, led by the Lord, is telling the Pharaoh, what you need to do is actually... Um, um, what is the word? I can't even think of it. Uh, yeah, bring it up to 20%. You need to increase. You need to increase it. To one fifth meant a 20%. In, in other words, instead of 10% of the grain, everybody needs to uh, give 20%. And guess what they're going to do with that? They're going to keep it and save it for when the famine comes. So the Pharaoh's listening to all this. Verse 35, and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh, corn, grain, and all, and let them keep food in the cities. Verse 36, and we'll end with this one. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. He said, you need to store up all this for the next seven years, 20% from everybody. And uh, so that the people, the land doesn't perish. The people don't die off the cattle, you know, through this famine. And I hate to stop right here, but it's time. But next week is, 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 is one of the most beautiful parts of this passage. It's Pastor Dave's favorite part of the passage. Uh, and we're not going to go into it. We're going to leave it like that. But how God, well, I'll just say this, how the Lord can take anybody, no matter where you are. You know, and it can be like Joseph. You know, he was, like I said, about 11 years approximately serving uh, Potiphar, okay, as a servant, as a slave. And then two years approximately, a little over two years in prison. That's 13 years. He was 17. Plus 13, he would be 30. What happens next, how God can take somebody from the pits of the dungeon to the very heights of authority and rulership. And it's because God is the one that's doing it. God moves the hearts of people. The Bible says the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. And as the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. God can move in anybody's heart hard heart. I don't care who you think you are. The wickedest man, we've seen this already. Think, if you can think, wicked leaders, how God has turned their hearts. God can do that with the prayers of God's people. And guess what? He can do what you never thought possible. Take you from here to here. And in, in the midst of all the time that he's working, and, 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 and you may be going through trials, I've mentioned this before, and tribulations, and you may be uh, uh, just thinking, I'm on my last breath. In the snap of a finger, if you have been, I can't really snap, but if, <laughs> if you have been faithful, if you have been faithful, God will reward you. He has a time and a place for everything. He's never forgotten anyone, and he never will. If we're his children, he knows us. And he will, at, in, in, in the midst of impossibilities, do the impossible to bring you victorious, such as he did 
Joseph. And we praise God for that. And, 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 and this favorite part that we're talking about that is Pastor Dave's favorite part about the passage of the whole, you know, all these chapters of, of, of Joseph is coming up next week. What God did for Joseph. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the wisdom that we find in your word. Thank you, Lord, that we see uh, so many pictures of people who were average, Lord, but were faithful, God, and you raised them up at the right time in the right place. Lord, help us to be like Joseph. Help us to be like you, God. D uh, Joseph is a picture of you. Help us to be like you, God. Oh, Father God, give us servants' hearts. Give us a heart after your own heart. We praise you, Lord. We worship you. We give you thanks. And we ask all of this in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.